the veil that separated us from the presence of God was ripped down the middle when Christ died for us. And his presence was made available to us for all of eternity. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence this morning. I know that you died to save us. You died so that we could be in your presence, Jesus. Lord, you are our savior. You're our healer. You're our deliverer. Thank you, Jesus.
Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, come, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off But when I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head. I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. I am redeemed. You said. I know this is just the first day of the week, so I guess I should have talked about last week. <laughs> last week was very special and very emotional because some of you in the house knew that Sister Ada Schultz passed. Her funeral was on Monday, and the amazing thing about it, it was one of the smallest attendances of a funeral I've, I've officiated, and uh, the reason for that is she outlived almost everybody she knew in her family and her friends. Wow. And one of the members of her family was 95. She was only 92. 95-year-old brother was there. Amen. I hadn't seen him for a while, and last time I saw him, I had committed his son to the ground, and before that, another family member. How many realize we need to be a blessing to people so they want us around them when they're hurting? 
We're going to miss Ada. She was a tremendous blessing in many, many years. And so this has been a, a very heavy week. A lot of good things. There's a lot of attack going on right now. Come on, say it with me. But we're going to win. As a matter of fact, we got a hold of the winning hand already. So before you go into a test, hold on to the winning, saving, healing hand. How many of you are glad we're blessed today? I want you to go to Scripture to do some homework today, if you would. In the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, is where we're going to go on this, this service. And I had my mind so filled with so many things that I wanted to share with you. But time will not allow all of it. So if you'll also write down under that in the Old Covenant, Psalm 34. These are the songs that were written by David and, and other writers that were allowed to put uh, these psalms, if you will, in, into a, a conglomerate so that we can, a few thousand years later, sing those same, same songs about the same God and receive similar benefits. Today I want to say this, I am thankful. We take that so lightly, I am thankful. And so what are you thankful for? You don't have time for me to tell you all the reasons. I was born into a family of ministry. I thank God still for my father. Amen. How many of you can still be thankful? Amen. My father was just a young man going into to baseball as a career. He was a great pitcher. And God saved him and changed his course so he was a preacher. If God hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here and you'd all be sitting there looking up at that wall without me. How many of God has a master plan? He met my mother by divine intervention, and she had three sons. And for nearly 52 years, we've traveled. I have. They've traveled a little bit longer, 52 years across the country in different parts of the world touching lives. I'm thankful for the health. I'm thankful for the ability and a strong mind. Now, don't argue with me while I'm preaching good. I have a picture on my desk of Mama Dad Hamilton, and I, I know Dad Hamilton's testimony always was, I thank God for my health. And all the young people looked over at him like, is that important? That's important. Amen. How many of you appreciate your health? Amen. Come on. If you had been through all I've been through, you'd be thanking God for your health. Amen. Come on. And God has restored a number of times. I've been threatened. Amen. I've been in accidents. I've been in situations. I've been uh, several million miles at least in traveling, flying, driving, cars, trucks, whatever. And I've been safe to continue to be here today. I, I have the best wife in the world, the best children in the world. One amen on that, it wasn't enough, really, really enough right there when pastor's on the front row hoping somebody says amen to that with a sounding applause and great celebration and didn't get any of that yet. But everybody say, as long as the pastor knows it's true. How many of you realize we're all in this room together? Okay, we don't say it enough, so I'm going to say it this morning. I'm thankful for you. Thank you. Again, just one's enough. <laughs> this last month, we had pastor's appreciation. I received some of the kindest words ever. The services of late, I've had people come up and talk about how the ministry was there to intervene in their life over decades of time when they needed a word. How many of sometimes we need to know we're appreciated? How many of you are thankful for the one sitting by you? I know you are. You would have sat over there. How many look at somebody, and, and across this room, there's somebody that was there with a smile or a hug or a kind word when you desperately needed it? Come on, somebody that maybe passed by the casket with the graveyard with you, or somebody that helped you when you were in the hospital, or somebody that gave you some little resource when you needed food on the table. How many of we ought to be a thankful people? How many of you this morning could just say, I am thankful? So I'm going to ask you this. God isn't finished yet with what he's doing in your life. Can we just talk this morning? Some of you have promises that haven't been fulfilled yet. Don't wait till they're fulfilled to be thankful. Because that's not the way it works in this kingdom. If you want something from God, you enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And then you can get into his courts with praise. How many he inhabits the praises of his people? You can't just come into the presence of God anyway. You have to have a thankful heart. So I have been saying it for a month. I'll say it again. I want to live my life thankful. My first word in the morning before I uh, talk to Sister Kathy, before any calls are answered, before any situation, I tell God I am thankful for you, my Father. Jesus, I thank you for saving me. Holy Spirit, I thank you for abiding and manifesting every promise that's ever been made for my life. That's a good way to start your day. That's a good way to begin any day is to be thankful because if you're not thankful, you're on your own. How many believe the thankfulness is not a day? It's a lifestyle. 
How many appreciate being around people that are thankful? Thankful people have a good attitude. People that are mad because they didn't get their way yet, not so much. How many like to hang around thankful people? I thank God for the waiter that came. Come on. I thank God when they brought the food that I asked for. I thank God when it's hot, when it's supposed to be hot and cold. Come on, somebody say, that's too many things to be thankful. You need to be thankful for every detail of your life. And if you're thankful all the time, you're the most blessed you can possibly be. So I want you to learn how to be thankful. But you don't know what I've been through. I don't want to know. You survive that. Let's begin again. Let's start off this, this season with an attitude of gratitude. I want to bless the Lord at all times. I want his praise to every Thanksgiving day to be upon my lips. No, I want to bless him at all times. Let his praise continually be upon my lips. The happiest people in the world are people that are not rich. They're the people that are thankful. I've been thankful when all we had for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner was a chicken pot pie. Yeah, I've been poor. Daddy didn't have a lot of money, and all he had that one Christmas to give to us was a little toy that he could afford, and he loved and wanted to give much, much more. But five for a dollar banquet pot pies was all we had on the Christmas table. Might have been the best meal I ever had because it was surrounded by love and appreciation of a family that loved me and a God that loved me and an answering Savior that's been there every time I've been sick or in trouble. Would somebody say, I got a right to be thankful? I don't know why we let the most important gifts pass us by. My best gift is not a car that I can drive home that I've had to spend a thousand or two on, the, on trying to get it back on the road in the last few weeks. That's a car. It just gets me places. I'm thankful that I'm thankful. How many of you can start being thankful before you get your way? Okay, I'll hit you where you hurt. How many like to be thankful when God doesn't want to do it your way? Because he has a better way. I've asked God for a lot of things he didn't give me. And I found out why later. And I was so thankful that he was smarter than me. Yes, I said it. He's smarter than you are. Every time. In every situation. Elbow your neighbor and tell him you need to record this. You might need this. How many of you can be thankful when your miracle hasn't come yet? Anybody can praise God when the doctor says... Clean bill of health. You don't have it anymore. Why can't we be thankful when he first tells us you may not make it? Because God is still God then. Oh, we're going to foreclose. Why don't you praise God when they say that instead of waiting until you finally get the nickels and dimes and hundreds together to pay off one more month of rent? We need to praise him in advance. How many realize that sometimes we praise him? And I want us to learn how to praise him before our miracle is manifest. Amen. See, if you praise him all the time, you won't have to worry about that. Well, am I in a trial, just came out of a trial, going into a trial? It won't matter because you're already thankful. Look at me. And this is very hard. I learned it after years of ministering. You can't worship and trust a God that you're not thankful for. And any worship you give if you're not doing it with a thankful spirit, it's not worship. Because you can't be thankful unless you feel appreciation. If you really appreciate God, you'll worship him. Yeah. Some people cry. Some people get wild. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. I mean, no, not everybody's hyper like me and Jesus. <laughs> there are quiet Christians. Well, I need to act like everybody else. No, act like yourself. God made you because he wanted your kind of praise. Why don't you jump and dance? Because I'm not a jumper and a dancer sometimes. Sometimes I'm a weeper. And sometimes I'm confused with some folks. That are, okay, moving right along. Would somebody say, I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to start thanking him while I'm going through this. Everybody say, this. I love the song Paul wrote. It said, it ain't over till God said it's over. And this thing, this thing is not over yet. Come on, say it with me. My test is only a test. But my promise is the word of God. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy always comes in the morning. Can I just say it? I want to be like the three Hebrew children that are thanking him going into the fire. 
You don't have time to pray when the fire is seven times hotter than it should have been heated and the people throwing you in are burned instantly and they're dead, but you're in the fire. You better be praising God going in. And the Lord is saying praise is a lifestyle. They were willing to go to the fire rather than bow their knee. They were willing because they were thankful to a God of eternal life. They were thankful. I want to be more thankful today. I just got to admit this. I am not nearly thankful enough. If I did have more thanksgiving spirit, I would give the waitress a bigger tip. <laughs> I appreciate it, but not all that. Mr. Goss and Kathy and I and Annie were at a restaurant the other day, and they didn't get very much to eat, but he handed her a $20 bill, and she looked at him like, I'm going to hug you. I said, why did he do that? That's what he does. He said, some people, you know, they have all kinds of other ministries. They'll pay big money for other things, and they don't realize they miss an opportunity to witness to somebody with a good tip face-to-face. -face. All the waitresses just said amen right there. Thank you. I know where to get my amens. Let's go first to Psalm 34. David had the key and he had the answer and I'm going to relay it to you and it's up to you whether or not you digest this or ingest this or not. Psalm 34, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Well, how do you do that? You choose. Yeah, but I've been hearing bad stuff. That doesn't stop you from praising God. Because that's going to change. God's not. Situation, circumstance, we learned this year will change God won't change when the situation is forgotten God's still God when the circumstance is now what you've been waiting for for a year God is still God amen so David said I will praise his name continually it will be upon my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the Lord you know sometimes we need to brag on Jesus I said who, who are you serving I'm serving the king of kings I'm serving the Lord of, I'm serving the one that loved me enough to come down from heaven to earth and suffer for me, to die for me, the one that wants me with him forever. He loved me enough, he redeemed me, I love that song, he redeemed me from the law of sin and of death, he redeemed me from the curse, he redeemed me because he wants me with him forever. That's who I'm serving and that's why I continually want to praise him. So I'm going to, can I give you this word, boast? Anybody been around boasting people? They've already done everything there is to do. And get out of the way, Michelangelo. I could have outdone that. Henry Ford, I could have really made a car. Okay, so you know the same people. Let's go on. David said, I'm going to boast about my Lord. And the humble, those that are humble will hear it, and they'll be glad with me. Then he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Anybody ever have a magnifying glass? Do you know what that, do they still have those in school? It's a round piece of glass. If you put it up to your eye, you can see stuff bigger. Or you can burn wasps with it in the sun. That's what I'm hearing in this room. <laughs> I know where I am. I've been here 33 years. I know where I am. What he is saying, I'll magnify him. I'm going to make him bigger than you think he is. I can't make him bigger than he is. I just have to allow him to become bigger in your imagination than you've ever thought that he is. When somebody say, I want to magnify the Lord. God, make us a magnifying glass so when the world sees us, they see a big God. Wow, I love that. Let us exalt his name together. David is saying, I've been doing this by myself. Would y'all help me? Y'all want to sing with me? You want to praise God with me? When the praise team is singing, I've been redeemed. I want you to try to drown them out. Oh, not really, but at least sing along. How many know it's good to praise God, but you need somebody to praise him with you? And when there's two or three agreeing, touching anything we ask in agreement on him, it will be granted. Aren't you glad that God just looking for some folks? Then he said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, delivered me out of all of my fear. Can I say it? All of my life, the Lord has always delivered me from everything I was afraid of. Always. What are you afraid of? Too many things for me to mention. I finally realized I'm not going to die until God is finished. So I might as well enjoy living. <laughs> Everybody loves you. No, there's two or three that don't. And they carry. Okay. <laughs> Scared me just a moment there. How many of you have come to the place where you're starting to realize, I thank him, but not enough? 
has this already helped you enough to realize I need to think about my first moment, what I'm going to do today? Amen. Oh, I've got things to do. I've got a lot of busyness, but I'm going to start off right by thanking him. Amen. And again, I can't thank him if I don't love him and trust him. Amen. You never say thank you to somebody that never gives you anything. Right. <laughs> and some folks, when you do give them, they don't. Amen. Amen. He delivered me from all my fear. That's why I'm thankful. They looked to him that were enlightened. Their faces were not ashamed. Everybody that looks upon him always gets the light that he is. I love this because David, one of the richest men in the world at that time, said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. How many without the Lord you're poor? I don't care how much you have, you'll leave it behind. I drove out to New Holland with Ada's body and placed her there beside her husband. There was not a U-Haul trailer on the back of that casket. She left it here. But she sent up some blessings in the future. She lifted our hands many, many times so that we could reach another country or another area. Just helped us. What a wealthy woman just wanted to do something. Am I right? How many of you realize this morning that David was talking out of his heart? He said, when I had no other source, that means poverty means I have no other help. The Lord heard me. He saved me out of all. That word's very significant to all of us around here. He's saying, the Lord has always delivered me out of all my trouble. How many have been through some stuff? Look at me, I'm going to prophesy to everybody in the room at one time. Yea, you will go through more. <laughs> Why? Because Jesus said, in this world you do have trouble. But don't let it bum you out because I've already conquered the world if you'll allow. That's why we're thankful. Look at verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him, and he delivereth them. Okay, let me just say it this way. He didn't say the angel of the Lord will come down with a twist and a shout because you get in trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him. That's a constant. It's not a fear that we talk about. I'm afraid of this and afraid of that. It means you reverence him and you honor him and you fear his glory. You fear his name. Can I just say it? David is simply saying the angel, God's angel that encamps around about you because you trust him, you love him, you worship him. You're praising and celebrating. He will deliver you. Can everybody say all the time and every time? Then he is saying to those that are listening to this, he is saying, why don't you taste what I'm tasting and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Again, it's hard to trust a God you don't believe. It's hard to thank God if you don't believe what he's going to do. Can I, can I add a little note right here? There's a lot of people that don't praise God for eternal life. Because they're probably not real sure if it's really going to happen. It's hard to praise God for a healing if you're not sure it's going to manifest. It's hard to praise God for your family that's really in deep trouble right now and they're very close to death in their lifestyle or their addiction or whatever. Really hard to praise God until you see the victory. That's not the time to praise Him when it's done. You need to praise Him so He comes on the scene and sends the angel of deliverance right now where you are right now. This has been on my spirit all week, so I'm going to ask you to get involved in this part with me. Say this with me right now. What I'm going through right now. He deserves to be thanked. For what he is doing, what I don't see him doing, what I don't feel him doing, but what he said he's doing right now. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. Lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. Lord, dear sisters, wanted to go fly to another part of the world, another part of the country, afraid to get on the plane. I said, once you go, you'll love it. She said, I'm afraid of heights. I said, the Lord said, lo, I'll be with you always. So maybe you better drive. <laughs> How many know the Lord is 20,000 feet, 100,000 feet, just like he's right down here? Yeah. Amen. Say it. He's everywhere. Yeah. Let me wrap this up in your spirit. Go down to verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. How many know the Lord hears you when you're crying out to him? His ears are open to the cry. Out of about 7 billion people on the planet, he hears you. Because you're in right standing. You're righteous. Have you ever talked to people and you knew they weren't listening? <laughs> they just keep doing whatever they're doing. You're talking. They're not even listening. <laughs> Somebody said teenagers. I think it's us old folks too. 
Have you ever talked to somebody and you think you really got their attention and they said, oh, what? I was, I was, I had my mind on something else. Look at me. The Lord is never distracted. He hears every individual word from every individual believer at the same time around the world with compassion. Am I right? His eyes are open to them. His ears are open to their cry. That ought to be enough to make us celebrate today. Just this more that you need to hear. The face of the Lord is against them to do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. God wants to stop the attack that's coming against you. Then he said, the righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their trouble. I like the way David said he always does it all the time. How many, you're not going to end up with any trouble when you continue to walk with God. He will deliver you from all. Say one more time, all. And then I love this. The Lord is near to them that have a broken spirit. He saves such of them that have or be of a contrite heart. How many of the Lord's just looking for people with a good attitude? I, I, I'm more and more like the Lord in this area because I like to be around people with a good attitude. I, I don't really like to hang out with folks that got a bad day. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> have you ever said something to someone, they just bit your head off and you, you just say anything but hi? Because, see, you're the beneficiary of what happened before you got there. Aren't you glad the Lord's not like that? Yeah. I've never said, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. He bit my head off because he just dealt with some hard Christians. <laughs> Everybody say, he's near me because I need him. Come on, say to you, he's near me because I need him. Then he says something we didn't want to hear, but David's already walked through it. And he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of well, you're talking about sickness? No, any time an affliction comes. I have been afflicted to hurt me more in my mind than affliction to hurt me in my body. I've been afflicted by hurt and torment and abandonment and sorrow. It did more damage, if you will, that affliction than something that cut me. Are you still with me? So the Lord said, many in this life are the afflictions of the who? Of the righteous. Just because you're righteous doesn't give you a free ticket to go around trouble. That's why the Bible is full of his children that walked through the fire. <laughs> okay, you wish I hadn't said that, right? You will walk through your fire. But you won't be burned. Uh, 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 three Hebrew children had a buddy named Daniel. They made him a leader even in a captive nation. Whew. Wow. And they said, if you don't stop his praying stuff, we're going to throw you to the lions. He probably said, I've never been Alpo or dog food before, or lion's food, so you're not going to stop me with threats. My thanksgiving to God is more important to me than listening to you. Sometimes we need to tell the devil, just close the door. I didn't invite you here. I don't care about your threat. God is with me in the house. I am not going to fear what the enemy has got planned against my life. Greater is he that lives in the pasture. Did I say that? Or do we just think it? The Bible said he keeps all of his bones and not one of them is broken. Prophecy of the Lord. Not one bone, bone broken when they mauled him and tried to kill him. Evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The people that are working against you right now are going to be moved out of your way. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. I, I just got to tell you as long as I'm trusting the Lord everything's going to be all right. We say that more than anything else. I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Why? Because Look at me. <laughs> don't let the condemner condemn you even if you're not perfect. Because I don't praise him and trust him and thank him and worship him because I'm perfect. I praise him because I want to be more perfect like him and bring more glory and honor to his name. And the Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him. Nobody that trusts in God will be desolate. Nobody. Everybody. Everybody. See, all of us. That's us. None of us will be desolate. I trust him. And I'm learning to praise him when it doesn't make sense. Okay, I'll close, but I'm going to say it. I want to praise him when it doesn't make any kind of sense to praise God. People ought to stop you and say, don't you know you're going through fire? Don't you know everything is going wrong? Your car just, the wheel just came off. The house is on fire. You just got fired. The doctor's got a whole list of stuff that's going to kill you. That's a time to praise God. And then the world notices there's something different about you. You must really 
trust him. You must really love him and believe in him to thank him now. Don't wait till the battle's over. Praise him right now. Worship him right now. Can everybody lift your hands and say, I'm thankful while I'm going through the fire. Say out loud, I'm thankful right now. We said weeping endures for the night, but man, my morning is never coming. Feel like I'm living in Alaska where it's daylight all the time and then it's night forever. No. We should be living in the light. What does that mean? Understanding. If you're not praising, you need to understand why you need to praise him more. If you can't worship him in the fire, you need to find out why. Yeah, but if you know what's going on in my life, you want me to come worry with you? I could send you a I'm sorry card. How's that going to help you? I'd rather come in and teach you how to thank him. Because when you get thankful, then you become worshipful and praise-filled. And then God is able to do something. Amen? God inhabits what? So to get praise, you have to be thankful. <laughs> Can I be mean a minute? There's going to be a whole lot of folks blessing a turkey and a ham or a potted meat sandwich or whatever they're having Thanksgiving Day. And it's a formula prayer without being thankful. Amen. See, being thankful to God doesn't depend on what you have. It depends on what you believe. Amen. Amen. I've passed through this life all these years, and I've had a lot of people say, man, I'll be right there. I got your back. Good thing my back didn't need them. Because they ain't been back for my back. Amen. Amen. Especially when I was out of work. I'm trying to rhyme something here. How many know you can't put your trust in flesh? Flesh will fail you. Amen. The people that kiss you on the cheek and slobber on you and tell you how much they love you, they're the first ones out the door. Amen. 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 And you know who's really there is the ones that never brag. They just got your back. Yeah. And even if they leave, the Lord's right there saying, well, you know, they had to leave. Yeah. Let me close. One of my favorite scriptures, the Lord is saying this often so we, we're not discouraged. They asked one time, they said, why is it those people left us that were with us? He said, they were never really with us. They had to leave so be manifest. They weren't really with us. Yeah. Right. Be careful who you think's with you. Because the ones that are really with you will be with you in the fire. They'll walk with you to the lion's den. Amen. They'll go to court for you. Even if they have to implicate themselves. I lost three folks right there. Somebody facing court. After all these years, what can I say to you to encourage you? You have to want to be thankful. I can't just preach a wonderful message or a good word, Pastor. If you don't take it home with you, it died right here. It was good, but not for you. How many of you want to become a thankful person? How many of you have a lot to be thankful for? How many have been through some tests? How many got through that? How many have been through some losses? You survived. How many of you just honestly are still here? That's my best test. I'm here. People look at me like, what does that mean? If you only knew. I made it. And tomorrow is no threat to me because the one that brought me here is the one walking before me there. I'm thankful. Wave your hand and say this with me. I am thankful this morning. Yeah, but my morning is not coming. It will. A prophetic word came, and I'm going to ask you to apply this to your own life. When Paul and Silas had been apprehended for doing a miracle for a demon-possessed girl, the church world didn't like that, and... The people making money off of this slave girl didn't like that. So they beat them close to the death of their life and they threw them in prison and shackled them. And so they went into this dungeon thankful. I can't tell you how many ministries of some variety have told me in all these years, I'm serving the Lord. I don't know why I have to go through this. Doesn't the Lord know I'm serving him? Yeah. But are you? They started singing in the darkest hour, knowing tomorrow they could be decapitated. Why? They were thankful for their God. 
They weren't thankful for deliverance. That hadn't happened yet. They weren't thankful for being free. That hadn't happened yet. They weren't thankful for healing. Their back was still ripped open. They're probably leaning against a stone wall, ripping it more. So they weren't praising God for freedom. That hadn't come yet. I got a whole series I got to give, but I'm not going to give it all this morning because I don't want to distract you from your thankfulness. There's sometimes you don't get what you want. And then you find out if you were really a thankful person anyway. So when they started singing, wouldn't you like to have a tape of Paul and Silas singing? Maybe a little off key like, oh, I love you, Lord, I love you, Jesus. The agony. And the Lord shook open the prisons, unshackled their body. Well, that's a good time to be thankful. No, they were already thankful. They looked around and all the shackles on every prisoner's hands and feet fell off. But the presence of God was so sweet they didn't want to leave. Okay, I'll say it. When you really walk into a thankful spirit, nothing changes it. A greater opportunity. I could be free. No, I'm in the presence of God and I'm more thankful for His presence than I am for freedom. Some of you right now have loved ones. God sets you free. But all the bound ones around you are still bound. They haven't been freed yet. If you want your loved ones to be free, thank God. He didn't say, beg me ever. He wants us to live a thanksgiving life. And he'll automatically do what you won't even have to pray about anymore. Stand to your feet if you will this morning. But everybody say, I want to praise him in the test. I want to praise him when it's hard. I don't want to look around and see if it's a good time to praise him. I don't want to look at the calendar and say, well, you know, I praised God last year. I had a flashback on Facebook from a year ago, and I praised God a year ago. You need to praise Him when you're walking through the worst things in your life. Why? Because that's where God comes to inhabit. Am I right? Bow your head for a moment. I want to take this privilege, and it doesn't matter what time of the service we're in, but I just felt a stop right there for a couple of people in this room that have been vacillating between faith and fear. Eternity is real. It's forever. Whatever you think about it, heaven is more awesome than you can imagine. And some say, well, I believe in hell. If you did, you'd probably lay on the altar for the rest of your life praying. We can't even fathom eternity. But this morning, I want somebody for the first time in your life to become truly thankful for a Savior. I'm not ashamed to stand before you and tell you I am not ashamed of Jesus. Not only because he bled for me to heal my sick body, but he was crucified. The blood ran out and poured down upon the dirt that humanity is made out of. Because he knew one day I would get a chance to accept him and be thankful. I need somebody today to let the Lord be your Savior. My greatest joy is not if somebody came and said, here's $5 million, you can build the church debt free. Oh, that would make celebration, but... Not as much as if a soul finds Jesus Christ. If money and things are more important than a soul, we've lost our purpose. We've lost our reason. Just for a moment, if you would like to let him become the Lord of your life, if you haven't done that. Brother, I think everybody in the house is safe. You don't know. You don't know if anybody's made that total commitment to let him be the Lord of their life. Well, I want him to wash away my sin, but do you want him to live in control of your life? If you do, I want you to come right now. We're just going to take a moment. I've always said this. I'll be the last one out the door probably today. And if you need somebody to agree with you, maybe you're a shy or you're ashamed. I, I can understand that to some degree. But I can't be ashamed of the only one that really loves me for eternity. And the one that laid down his life so that I could have that life. I, I have to want him in my life. If I'm talking to you, my precious friend, I'd like you to come right now. Let's just take this moment together to make it right with God. Thank you for it. Glory, give Him honor, give Him worship. Just a time to celebrate the power of His glory and the authority that is working in our spirit. Thank you for your presence, O Lord. Come on, somebody say it's time for His presence to rule our life. It's time for His will to be accomplished. I've never said this in my whole life to a body of believers, but I'm going to say to you right now, please, if you can say it with me, do so. I thank you for the unknown. 
You don't always tell me what you're doing. But I trust you. I trust you right now. In my fire. In my test. In my trial. In my physical attack. My emotional attack. I trust you. That this is all turning around for your glory. And for my benefit. So why can't I thank you? Why can't I praise you? Why can't I glorify your name? This darkness is over. The light has begun. And I will bless my Lord at all times. Beginning this moment, his praise shall continually be upon my lips. And he will deliver me. He will finish his masterful work in every area of my life. And I receive it for your glory and for your namesake. Everybody say, for your glory, Lord. And for your namesake, I want everybody to lift up your right hand and close your eyes and just for a moment, say these words with me. Lord, I'm right here. A praiser. A thankful worshiper. I will never doubt you again. So I can praise you in advance. Not knowing the outcome, but I know your will will be done your kingdom shall come and I'm the beneficiary of your presence because I trust you because you love me I receive all the benefits without understanding without question this day in Jesus name Put your hand on your heart and say along with me, Lord, I believe that you're my healer. Doesn't matter what the doc said, what the nurses have shared. I trust you, Lord. I trust you right now. I trust you. There's some that we're praying for. It's very obvious. Sister Millie is coming through a long, about a month of hospitalization. That's obvious. There's some of you in this room that are fighting battles and you can't really share with anyone else what is going on. We speak to Roger right now. Father, I ask you to let them see something different than what they planned. God, they're looking for a death threat. We're looking for a healing. They're looking at signs and symptoms. We're looking to a Savior, a loving, healing Savior. I have many on my heart right now that are grieving and that are going through physical attacks, threats. So while I'm thanking God early in the morning, I lift every one of them to Jesus Christ. Some that without divine intervention won't have much longer to live. All the way from here to California, south, northeast, people that are on my heart. I'm going to ask you to call the name of the one that's on your heart right now and say, Lord, I'm thankful, and then you fill in the blank. I'm thankful for the healing or the salvation or the miracle. I'm thankful for the one that is so bound they can't set themselves free. I'm thankful that you have the power to do that. I'm thankful because like Job in the middle of his boils and his death threat, he knew that his Redeemer lived. Father, help me to trust you enough to thank you all the days of my life. I give you the praise. I want to give you a word right now, and I want you to hear this. I was sitting at my desk in the Springfield Church the other night, and God reminded me of a word he had given uh, the week before. This is what he said. Your miracle is not going to come the way you expected it. That's all. Didn't have to write a book. He just said your miracle is not going to come the way you expected it. Everybody say, it will come. I know the preachers used to say money cometh, and it didn't. But everybody say, miracles come. Salvation comes. Ever promise fulfilled. I want you to look somebody right in the eye and tell them, you don't know how thankful I am for you. If you were not in my life, no, don't ask them to marry you yet. I'm just, I'm just trying to get, (laughs) just trying to let a little appreciation take place. Come on, say this with me out loud. Lord, I thank you most of all because you're in charge of my life and I trust you. Can we clap our hands and give him some praise for just a moment? Magnify his name. Maybe seated if you like. Amen. Just got to ask you, how many of you heard this word this morning? How many of you believe the word of the Lord that you heard? 